Hi and welcome to the first episode of The Road Goes On Costa Rica. This trip I'm going to Costa Rica in December 2014. For the first half to visit this astonishingly beautiful country and the second half to work with the Overseas Volunteer Program focusing on marine conservation. I have seven weeks until my departure date so I'm going to do an episode once a week talking about the country, the project and everything wonderful that goes along with it. Just to start things off, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Costa Rica. Costa Rica is a beautiful country in Central America between Nicaragua and Panama. There have been people living in Costa Rica for the last 10,000 years, at least, though we don't know much about them because of the torrential downpours and the fact that the Spanish conquistadors didn't like things that were different and therefore destroyed them. This is quite a shame because it is believed that there are as many as 400,000 people living in the rainforest when Chris Columbus landed in 1502, and that's a lot of memories to lose. In 1502, Chris had to land near Puerto Limon after a hurricane. Because he was such a friendly guy, he decided to travel into the country and spent a couple of days there. He returned, saying that he had seen more gold in two days than four years in Espanola. He presumably said this in Spanish, and perhaps was talking more about these extra shiny bugs than anything else, as none of his successors ever found the mountainous amounts of gold he spoke of. But Chris's description of La Costa Rica is where we get the name today. And while it may not be rich in the sense of disgusting amounts of shiny rocks, it has plenty of beautiful sights and a rich culture. Costa Rica gained independence in the 19th century. In 1838, Costa Rica formally proclaimed itself sovereign. Also, while civil wars raged in the region after independence from Spain and the collapse of Mexico's short-lived empire, Costa Rica remained largely at peace, lending to the laid-back attitude that Costa Ricans have now. Like every country, there was some upheaval, including the overthrow of military dictator General Frederico Tinoco Granados in 1919. This led to a considerable decline in the size, wealth, and political influence of the military. Later, in 1948, Jose Figueres Ferrer led an armed uprising in the wake of a disputed presidential election, resulting in a 44-day civil war leading to 2,000 fatalities, and resulted in the final dissolution of the military. That's right, Costa Rica is one of the only countries without a standing army. They are also extremely involved in environmental awareness and are the only country to meet all five criteria established to measure environmental sustainability. They boast their achievable goal of being the first carbon neutral country by 2021. Which is impressive, seeing as I come from the second biggest country in the world with a relatively small population, you'd think with all those ridiculously vast wilderness and kilometers of trees we'd have a better carbon footprint. Environmental conservation is a big part of this country and that is exactly what my volunteer project is all about. So I'll tell you a bit about what I'm doing there and why I've been spewing basic facts about Costa Rica. The project I'm involved in is through Youth Challenge International, and as I said earlier, about marine conservation, focusing on the protection of the Eastern Pacific Leatherback Sea Turtle. These turtles are extremely impressive and can grow up to a size of 2 meters in length. Look at that, you could ride it into battle, a very slow land battle, or perhaps a slightly faster under the sea battle, but you could ride it into battle nonetheless. These turtles have completed some epic journeys. A group of scientists tracked a leatherback from Indonesia to the U.S. in an epic 20,000 kilometer journey. Most of the time, these turtles follow their jellyfish prey, spending a lot of their daytime in the deep ocean and then the nights in the shallow ocean where their jellyfish like to hang out. A big cause for their endangerment is that they mistake plastic bags for jellyfish. I mean, who could blame them? It's not like plastic bags are a natural part of their habitat, and if you didn't know what a plastic bag was, I wouldn't blame you for thinking it might be a jellyfish. I thought these were teeth when I first saw them, so yes, they could absolutely be jellyfish. Sea turtle eggs are also considered a delicacy in many countries, and over-harvesting of these eggs has led to a large decrease in the number of turtles. These massive sea turtles have also been getting caught in fishing nets, wires and lines, and all sorts of other human marine junk. But there's good news. There are several local, national, and international efforts to help restore the sea turtle population and reduce the pollution that is overwhelming their and many other marine animals' environment, my program being one of them. There are also lots of ways to get involved with conservation projects and other outreach programs at home or abroad.
In my next episode, I'm going to talk more in depth about Youth Challenge International and the conservation organization in Costa Rica. If you have any questions, comments, or corrections, my expertise is in Google searches and rambling, not detailed knowledge of countries far away from me, just give me a shout in the comments below. Also, check out my fundraising page at the link in the description of this video for more information about Youth Challenge International and options for donations.